Okay guys, uh, yesterday when I was painting this gun, uh, in part one of how to paint the M1A, I, or M1A stock, I haven't really named it yet, in fact, uh, when you're watching this, part one ha hasn't even been uploaded yet, so, uh, I said yesterday when painting this, that, uh, the only things that touch the stock are the trigger group. And I accidentally said that this is the upper receiver. Uh, this is just the, the receiver. There is no upper. This isn't the AR-15. I, I was in the moment. Uh, the part that holds the barrel and the gas piston in here, I'll take it down and show you that. This part right here, that's what I was talking about. Right here. See, it holds the gas piston and the barrel. It lines them. And I called this a retaining pin, but I, I guess this is really a cap of some sort. And that touches right down in here. This holds this part right here to the stock. And that is all that touches the gun. This up here, the receiver, this, this little cap here, and this trigger group. That's all that touches the stock. And as you can see, I did really good at keeping paint out of the stock. So, it shouldn't have no hiccups or problems. And I don't see how it would. I mean, this is an M1A. If paint's going to if if paint's going to hurt it in any way, shape, or form, then it's. I don't know how. I don't know what to say on it. But I, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. So. Just letting y'all know. Alright. So I got it all untaped. All the stencils off of the gun. Now what I'm starting to do is. Put. Uh, rub steel wool. In the areas that. Kind of. I painted over. And on these. I kind of rubbed a little bit there. And as you can see I rubbed here. And it's removing the paint. So I'm going to film this part of the painting procedure so that way anyone who wants to paint their stock probably will paint it well they paint it better than mine there's a hundred and one ways to paint a gun this I just painted mine the way I paint my guns but I'm doing this part for to show how to get rid of these overlay uh, these areas that uh, ran over. My little stand here is a Gatorade bottle and duct tape. It's not the, it's not good, but it's not bad either. Yeah. All right. Hope it catches all of this. Okay. So yeah, rub it right. Right in there. It's going to be a long process. You won't get it exact, but it'll... It'll get out most of the flaws here. I was going to use a Dremel, but I decided against it. Because a Dremel has less control. It'd probably be more effective, but. It'd probably be more effective on the <laughs> paint. But you'd have less control, and I don't want to gouge my stock. And I'm sorry for the poor camera angles. I really need to invest in a better camera. That's a tripod. Let's see here. I 
And I know this is not the most professionally made video in the history of YouTube, but you got to work with what you get. You got to work with what you got. Alrighty. Let's go on the other side here. See, uh, the other side turned out all right, actually. See, it did bleed over a little bit, but that's not enough to worry about. I'm only correcting the ones that bled over like this. And the big old globs of paint that got blubbered up, or however you say, bubbled up. I might have to hit those with the Dremel. Oop. Okay. I put here to this part. I was afraid when I first started painting my gun that it wasn't going to turn out this good. It turned out better than I thought it would. Some areas are harder to get off than others. Also, there's probably 101 different ways to get paint off of uh, areas where paint aren't meant to be either. See that it's coming off of there better now. I'm trying to keep from wearing all the paint off around the areas where those are. See there where it kind of got the paint that there's where the uh, bleed over was and that's where the stencil was but it's all right. Let's get up here on the Bad. Let's hit the one here on the rear. reconstitute my steel wool here yeah these bigger blots uh, these bigger bubbles here where it bubbled up here let me move my sandbag on the other end these bigger bubbles here that I'd those would take all day to um, sit there and go over with steel wool so we might hit those with the I might hit those with the Dremel but the little areas right here like this those don't need to be hit with the Dremel I'm trying to get in as good as I can so you guys can see of course you don't want to press too hard you want to press hard, but not hard enough to where it starts taking off paint, like right here and right here. And of course I won't film me doing the whole thing because that would take all day.
And that really doesn't want to come off of there. I think that's all I'll do for now video wise. We'll come back later when I get more of it off. Or I might come back after it's all done because making a whole video just sitting there putting rubbing off paint blotches with steel wool would be kind of boring. But I tried to show you all what I could. Who knows, there might be other people that um, out here, out out there that watch this video and uh, wanted to use my method even though there like I said there's a hundred and one ways you can you could paint a gun I just painted the stock and that was it